conversation with him. Okay, so uh, the topic was finding a research topic, and there's something going on here. Okay, so I will, I will, my goal when making these slides was to give as practical tips as possible. So first thing first, uh, do not take too long to find a good doctoral advisor, okay? Because uh, having a good doctoral advisor versus having a bad doctoral advisor can make a big difference in your career especially with your mental health, okay? Uh, I have seen cases where some people had very bad equations with their doctor advisors. In my case, I, with all due respect, I had the best doctor advisor in the whole world, okay? Uh, ever, okay? So I hit a jackpot there, okay? So it really depends. So how do you find a good doctor advisor? Study their history. If you really connect with a junior professor who are just starting out, there's not much history to begin with, right? But if you think that there is a more senior professor, see how many people have graduated under them, see how they are doing in their careers, okay? And talk to their current doctoral students. Ask them about their personalities, how they handle things, so you'll get a fair idea on who to approach, okay? And then also see how how thinly spread they are, or are they? do they have enough time to give you? One could be an amazing researcher, but might not have any time to give you, right? So uh, do all this research and then find a doctoral advisor as soon as possible. In my case, I was an exception. I went for a PhD program because I wanted to be his student. If it was not him, I would not have gone for a PhD at all, right? So it depends from person to person. Second thing is that uh, in the first couple of years, you will end up reading a lot of research papers, right? So uh, people say that pursue a passion all the time. Let me just tell you what I am really passionate about. I am passionate about living, making a good life, getting a good job, and making a money. Whatever gets me there is I'm is oh, I'm passionate about really. Okay, okay. So what that when I say that. What I really mean by that is that not everyone will find their passion. If I pursued my passion, I would be studying astronomy, okay? But then I don't have that level of capability to handle astronomy PhD program. So it's not just about passion, it's about your interest and your capability. So when I say that, what you really need to go after is that when you read research papers, see what topics interest you and what topics you can actually understand. Okay, there are certain topics when I read those research papers, I don't understand much. For example, analytical modeling. The moment I see a lot of uh, integrations, sigmas, gammas, deltas going on in the paper, I just lose it, you know? So read those papers, see how much you're comprehending them, and if that topic is uh, something what interests you, okay? Uh, so it is a combination of your interest, your ability to understand what is going on, and then how, passionate you can be over time. My view is that people really get passionate about something that they're good at, okay? Once you, once something sparks your interest and you see that you are actually kind of good at it, then they both combine and over time it can become your passion, okay? Uh, now, when you are picking topics, okay, uh, make sure that your doctor advisor is also working on similar topics or is open to those topics that you are interested in, okay? Uh, what, what I mean by that is that I had one junior in the PhD program, he was interested about something very weird, which had no potential for uh, long-term uh, dissertation or long-term research, but he was very passionate about it. He wrote papers without his doctoral advisor, they all got kicked out in the first round everywhere. So he's not working on those research topics anymore. Where he found success is where his interest and his doctor advisor's interest converged, okay? So uh, again, your doctor advisor, if they are working already on the topics that you're interested in, it's fantastic. If not, they should be capable and open enough to get into that area. Okay, uh, now have to be more practical. Work on something on which you can get data on. You might have all the kinds of interests in the world, but if you cannot collect data on it, what's the point? You will not publish anything, right? Okay, so when you're reading research papers, always observe 
where they are getting their data from. Is it primary data? Is it secondary data? If it is primary data, whatever the methods they are doing, if they are doing experiments, if they are doing case studies, whatever they are doing, are you also capable of doing the same things? Okay, uh, are you well trained in the same methods that those papers have employed? Uh, are they using secondary data? Is that uh, secondary data, is that accessible to you? For example, I hope that all of you have heard of CompuStat, right? Where your financial metrics of companies. So you need to make sure that you can actually get data. For example, I was just starting out my PhD program and I was talking to my ex-boss. He himself was a PhD from the same program. He was now working in industry. I gave, uh, I suggested an amazing idea to him, something to do with outsourcing, something, something. He said, all fantastic, but who will give you the data? Your grandfather. I was like, okay. <laughs> he said, it's impossible to collect data on it. Now, uh, what do I say to that? Yeah, you might have what, all the great ideas on the world, but you have to be practical. Where are you getting the data from, right? Okay, now, uh, I would suggest that start looking for good data sets from the second year onwards, if not sooner. Okay, in my own case, uh, you know what, I will uh, tell my own case once I'm done with these slides. Okay, now, when it comes to topic, I say that search for a pink ocean. Does anyone know what pink ocean is? Do you know what blue ocean is, red ocean is, right? Blue ocean is where the market is all entirely open for you. There, are, nobody has done much research on it and people are really interested in it. For example, a couple of years ago, when Gen AI was just coming up, if you had a completed full-fledged research paper on Gen AI, you would be in blue ocean, right? Now. Uh, after some work has already been done on it, then you are in the pink ocean region, right? So I personally think that, oh, and before I get there, what is red ocean? A Lot of work has been done already. It's much harder for you to find something unique to contribute to, right? So the pink ocean is the best because some work has already been done, but there is still a lot of scope. The, and the research area is not entirely new, but there is, uh, it's kind of new still. If you are in that sweet spot, you would be very lucky. Okay, so now uh, there are, at least in information systems, the trends keep changing and there are a lot of topics that trend. For example, when I was just starting out my PhD program, knowledge management was the buzzword. How companies manage knowledge and all those kind of things. Then when I was uh, in the middle of my PhD program, every uh, Obamacare Act was passed and everyone was talking about healthcare IT. And all the schools were hiring we, for healthcare IT positions. Then it kept changing, cybersecurity, then what do I have? Social media, piracy, privacy, all those things. And three, four years ago, it was all blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Now everyone is talking about fake news and Gen AI. Okay, so these are all trends, but you need to identify uh, what are the trends that are kind of new, but not entirely new, and uh, if you can find a topic in that area. Okay, I think one of the best things that you can do is two things. Can you combine two or three different trends and merge those topics together in your research papers? And even better, can you actually do multidisciplinary research, which crosses, uh, which cuts, cuts across different disciplines? Why I say that is, for example, in one of my current papers, I submitted that paper to ISR, which is Information Systems Research, which is among the elite journals in IS. We could have submitted the same paper to POMS also, Production and Operations. That paper can belong to two different categories. And to some extent, it could also go to an accounting journal. Okay, when you have that, the number of elites that you can target actually multiplies right there. Okay? So, uh, uh, if you're, for example, one person was telling me that they had one paper uh, which got rejected at all elites and all near elites. Okay? Uh, and then they are thinking of killing the paper. If it was more interdisciplinary, they could have changed things and could have targeted other disciplines as well. Okay, uh, people say that pick one broad topic. I say that, okay, one broad topic is good, but try and pick two. Okay, my personal suggestion is that try and have three essays in your dissertation. I don't think that going with just one essay is good enough. Maybe it, it might be good enough for some, but I think it's better to have three distinct papers in your dissertation. Uh, all three can be in the same broader area, or it's even better, I think, if two of them belong to one area and third one is in a similar but quite a different area, 
okay then you have two streams of research and based on that you can find more opportunities to see where you can actually expand your research area over time okay uh, and my personal view is that uh, while you are working on your dissertation let's let's assume that you are going with three papers in your dissertation okay try and use your doctor advisors knowledge wisdom expertise to gather everything you can but once you do that do not try to cling on to them forever okay learn everything you can from your doctor advisor and then after that start forming your own relationships okay go to conferences talk to people uh, let me just give you one example i found okay probably the best co-author ever not through my doctor advisor not at a conference you know what i did okay so i have on google scholar there is this uh, you can set up notifications alerts right so i have put some alerts on google scholar so whenever papers are published in that area i get emails all right so two years ago or so or two three years ago i got google scholar alert on my email and i read that title i loved it then i opened that link and i read the abstract i really loved it okay i thought this is fantastic who wrote this paper it was a solo authored paper by a doctoral student in canada okay so i found a search for him on linkedin and i added him on linkedin and i sent him a message saying that hey i read your paper it was it won the best student paper award at academy of management okay so i messaged him on linkedin i asked for his number i got onto a phone call and i told him that hey i, I think in a long time i would like to work with you but he was too busy uh, with his dissertation okay so he was at queens university in canada then i said okay you know what you finish your dissertation you look for a job i will wait until then and i used to check up on him every couple of months or so and then uh, last year september i was in atlanta uh, and he got a job at a uni at, at university in south carolina which was about 5 hours away so i was already in atlanta 5 hours drive away i said okay he's there let me just drive over and meet him in person and i drove over to south carolina i spent uh, all evening and all night with him not all night but d discussing <laughs> but uh, i my okay my primary goal with him is that how can i get his fantastic data sets that was my primary goal to meet him okay okay so i kept discussing so many ideas with him i gave him all my data sets he shared his data sets with me okay uh, and then i drove back to atlanta and i started playing with those data sets after a while okay and then what happened is that i found some interesting results and i presented my results to him he hated those results he didn't like the idea nothing so i was like okay uh, and after that i personally liked that idea and then what i did is that i wrote the abstract and introduction and then i sent that stuff to him again this time when he actually read it he loved the paper so now i made up a co-author out of nowhere had i not sent him a linkedin request and all those things and guess what is happening right now that paper is under review at isr and this was my best co-author experience because uh, when i work with him he, whenever i am done with something when i send him he's a strategy guy i'm an is guy okay what i was amazed is that he, because he's junior in his first year of faculty job he reads papers in the background and then informs himself educates himself and then writes content and not just that he did data analysis with me and the best part was that on things that we were stuck at he would come live and we will write the paper at the same time you know on google docs and all those things and we uh, it was like i had never had that and he said something to me that no one had said it to me which was amazing he said that i feel bad that you are putting on all the effort let me also take more responsibility <laughs> okay it was music to my ears <laughs> okay so now uh, th with him i'm finding more and more topics now because after uh, making new friends we have we are exploring more topics so that is how i am finding more and more research topics okay so uh, that's about it so i think we should open up for q and a